Hey everybody, it's Ziz here, and today we are talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Bless Online. Now, like some of you, I thought we were going to be getting the fully featured Japanese version of Bless, but with better combat, improved performance, coherent tool tips, and none of that publisher BS like we've seen from other companies. But instead, it seems like we got a beta version of the game at a AAA price tag now we're going to go over all sorts of stuff like the launch combat game performance end game the future of bless my thoughts on the game but before we get into all that real quick i want to talk about people's expectations and early access i've heard a lot of people say that this game shouldn't have any major problems because it's been out for years in other regions and then on the flip side of that, anytime there's any problems, I've heard other people say, well, it's just early access and they kind of blow over any issues that the game has. And I feel like I kind of fit right in the middle of those. When it's one of the new features that they've been working on and adding like the combat and westernization, even though some of those tool tips are pretty meme worthy, I'm willing to forgive them and wait for them to fix that. So the new stuff, I can say sure it's early access, but the stuff that they've had for years, when we're talking about end game, when we're talking about the game performance itself and how well the engine works and that sort of stuff, I can say early access and give them a pass on that. Now, you may not agree with me, but at least you hopefully understand where I'm coming from as we go through all of these points. First thing I wanna talk about is where it all started at launch day. Now, most games, can let you pre-purchase and pre-download the game. And unfortunately, Bless couldn't do that, whether that was a decision by uh, NeoWiz or it was because it's considered early access on Steam. But either way, it really messed them up because they had no idea how many people were purchasing the game, so they didn't know how many servers to have ready. If they could have seen 80,000 people or whatever the number is, but if they could have seen how many people were purchasing the game, they could have known we need six servers to launch with. Instead, they had three servers ready, but they only had one server available when the game opened and people started logging in. This caused a really big problem because every single person who wanted to play with other people, friends, family, big, huge guilds, as soon as the first person got on and there was only that one server, that meant every single other person they were associated with was going to try to play on that server as well. It didn't matter if they were logging in two hours later or two days later, they're trying to log on to the same one because that was the only one available. And this is even way worse when you take huge streamers like Shroud and Soda Pop in into consideration. Normally when they would get in a game like this, they would purposely look for the low population server and go on there because they knew they have thousands of fans who wanna follow them. But when the game launches and there's only one server to pick from, obviously that causes a big problem. And when you can't pre-download it, that means everybody is downloading and rushing at the same time. It didn't stagger it at all. On top of that, when people finally tried to get into the game after downloading it, a lot of people had a problem with the blue loading screen. And people could get stuck in that literally for hours where you're trying to load into the game, it doesn't work, you exit out of it, and then you try to load in again. And there was really no idea how to fix this. Some people were saying spam the exit key. Some people were saying don't touch anything at all, run into administrator. And that caused a lot of frustration. And then you finally get past that and then you're waiting in these giant long queues because they don't have enough servers because they didn't know how many people. Now, every single MMO I've ever played at launch has massive issues. So the people out there saying that this is the worst MMO launch in history, seems like they haven't played more than a few MMOs, but there definitely were problems. Also for people who maybe started on one of the really full servers and later wanted to transfer to a different one, if you got all of your founder stuff on that first character, like your costumes and your Lumina, you couldn't switch it to your other characters. So then you made the decision, do I wanna wait in a six hour long queue or do I wanna play without all that extra stuff that I bought? So when we're talking about the launch day, whether it was good, bad or ugly, I definitely gotta say it was pretty bad. It's not the worst I've seen. I'm not gonna say it was completely ugly, but it was bad. There's no way you could say that that was a really good launch. And that carried over into the game. When we start talking about game performance now, I'll just cut straight to the chase. It is ugly. It is one of the worst I've seen in an MMO. Now it is playable and there are things you can do to make it better. 
You can make sure you're running in full screen. You can close your Steam overlay. You can change the INI files, settings, and things like that. You can Google that or look it up on Reddit. But the question remains, why should we as consumers need to do any of that? The game's been in development for seven years. It's been released in other regions. So why is it that people on the internet, on Reddit, can post something that help people get 10 to 40 better FPS? Why is that not standard? When you take into consideration how completely packed full and crazy the servers were, that means you have hundreds and thousands of people in the same zone, which just expounded on the problem. Now, days later from launch, it's better. There's less people logging in. All the population is spread out. There's way more servers available. And so performance today compared to launch day is night and day difference but it's still not great you can't say it's good and not even bad it's pretty ugly i have a really pretty good computer it's a 7700k overclocked to 5.0 i have a 1080 ti i have an ssd even with all the settings turned to the very lowest and with all the ini stuff changed basically as good a performance as you can get it still doesn't feel as smooth as other games just logging into the game and playing it without doing all this other extra work the game still doesn't feel as good. Now, is it unplayable? No, I've played 30 hours and streamed almost all of it and I've had fun doing it. But for a lot of people who maybe have lower systems or who are used to really high performance running at 165 FPS, this game definitely doesn't do it for you. Number three, talking about the combat. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty good in my opinion. Some people out there don't like it and they compare it to other games. I compare it, for example, to Elder Scrolls Online and maybe Arcage, and I would say Bless has better combat than either of those. However, it's not as good as World of Warcraft and how tight and precise that is, or Guild Wars 2, it's kind of in between those. But overall, I would say the combat is pretty good and one of the more fun aspects of the game. Now, all the combo stuff are fun, it feels visceral, it's pretty responsive and tight, especially now that the servers have calmed down a little bit and there's not lag and stuff. But the combat I actually really do enjoy, especially when you start playing a Berserker. The Berserker has the action combat like we had at the San Francisco event. That's where your camera is tied to your mouse. You can just move around and look and you have a reticle. And that allows you to uh, keybind your combos onto your mouse buttons, which make it feel more like an action game. It's quicker and more fast paced. So the Berserker is really fun in combat, in my opinion. But it was really disappointing when they said that the other classes aren't going to have that. In fact, I didn't even know about that until about five or six hours into launch when I started trying other classes and I saw it was available. And then people started looking through patch notes and saw a little line at the bottom of a patch note that said that wasn't available. They have said the reason they took it out was because for those other classes, supposedly it made them not as good. Like you, it was hard because it didn't interact well or whatever. Um, but this is something I told the developers. I said, that is our decision. Let us as players decide that, give us the option. If it's not as good, that's on us, right? Um, but it was very disappointing they removed that because even at the San Francisco event, I played on a Paladin for an hour and it had the combat like the Berserker has. And that's why I was so excited for it. And now that only they have it, it's not as fun. But I do still think the combat as good is good. They should hopefully add that combat to the rest of the classes soon as well. Um, but overall, I think the combat is one of the better parts of the game right now except for balance. Balance is really pretty crazy, especially in high level PVP. You got guardians basically one-shotting people, doing CC chains while they're dead. You got um, mages who have a couple teleports, instant DD and direct damage with no uh, cooldown. And then uh, this, you know, buffs that stun people. Uh, PVP right now is pretty crazy. And that's one of those things where with the new combat system, I'm willing to give them some time to work on that stuff but overall, I think the combat is actually pretty good. Now, once you've played the game for a little while and done some combat, you might get to end game. And if you do, you will realize there is no end game. And when I say there is no end game, I don't mean like in other MMOs where people rush to the end and then they blow through all the combat or all the content and then there's not any content left to do because they were too quick. No, what I'm talking about is all the content we were expecting to get that's available right now in Japan, almost all of it has been taken out 
of our version which is really crazy to me because that means a developer had to spend time taking that stuff out of the game. Instead of that developer spending time making the game better, someone made the decision, I want you to spend time taking out content. Now, if they had communicated to us why they were doing that, if they said, we don't want people getting an unfair advantage and rushing through it, so we're gonna introduce some of it a couple days later or a week later, maybe we could have gotten on board. But I think for almost everybody, this was like an all of a sudden, wait, are you serious? There's no content to do? And they've said that they're going to try to add it over the next week or two. Um, not all of it, we don't know exactly what's gonna be in, maybe some arenas, right? Maybe some of the dungeons, but um, we do not right now, as of three days into launch, we do not have the arenas. We do not have the instance PVP. We don't have the 100 versus 100 PVP. We don't have the high level dungeons to do. We don't have the whole zone where you do all of your dailies that um, pretty much facilitate all the world um, PVP. We, we don't have that. Uh, basically, all, we don't have the extended progression system once you get to level 45 where you can progress after. Basically, like 90%, 95% of what you do at max level isn't in at all. And they said they're going to release some of it in a couple weeks and then slowly after that. So this is an interesting one because we know the content is out there. It's not like there is no content. They have simply just didn't give it to us yet. And so in my opinion, that's pretty bad. Um, and I'm de that is one of the things that definitely upset me and made me question the developers. Um, so going into the future of the game, um, talking about the future of Bless, it's one of those things where you kind of can't go anywhere but up, right? We got multiple classes coming still, the Assassin and the Mystic. We have combat for those other classes. They'll hopefully they'll add the action combat. We have all of the end game that they're going to add. Um, as people spread out and they go to different servers, performance will get a little bit better just by you know attrition and things like that. Um, so from what we saw from the first very first day of the game to what's coming, the game will continue to get better. Um, one thing, unfortunately, though, is. I don't know how much I can trust the developers anymore going forward. That was one of the things I kept saying over and over when I got back from the San Francisco event was that it was great to meet the developers because it felt like they were passionate about making a great game for the gamers. And everybody, always, I heard over and over that this was gonna be different. When people said the game had failed in other regions, why was this gonna be different? And the answer is because there's no publisher. The developers get to do it the way they want. They get to get rid of all this cash shop stuff. But then you see stuff you know, where they're holding back combat, where they're not doing the end game stuff. Then people are doing instance dungeons and you see that it costs Lumina, it costs cash shop currency to instantly teleport to the dungeon. Now that's not the end of the world. You can simply just run to the dungeon or stand at the dungeon while you queue, but it's one of those little things that is just annoying. And it's like not, it doesn't feel like convenience anymore. It feels like you are nickel and diming me and you're playing these publisher games that we're sick and tired of seeing from all these other companies. So while there's a lot of content and a lot of good stuff coming on the way for the game, it also makes me hesitant as well because I don't really know if I can trust. Is the combat coming? Is the content coming? How long is it going to be? I don't know anymore and I can't give them my full support in that regard. Despite all of that, I would say the future of the game does look pretty good right now because we can't tell the future. The best we can go off is we know that Japan has a lot of this content so we can make a reasonable assumption we will get that soon. And that means for this game, we have some stuff to look forward to. Other games, you kind of never know when the new content is coming. This one, even though it's really kind of skeezy, the fact that the content is out there, we know we will get it eventually. Last but not least, I wanna talk about, um, we talked about the combat, we talked about the end game, we talked about the future. How, what are my final thoughts on the game. I would put it this way. If you are concerned about performance, if you are concerned, if you're, um, if you're concerned about performance, don't play this game. If you have a lower end system, if you want to make sure, you know, if you're used to really fast, you know, FPS and really great looking graphics and performance, 
the game's not for you. If you are really into the story and questing and lore and an enjoyable leveling up experience, this game is not for you. If you really like raids, big massive raids, lots of dungeon, lots of dungeon progression like WoW has, this game's not for you. If you like balanced PvP and very, um, not competitive, because there is competitive PvP, but if you like really balanced, you know, stuff like that for PvP and arenas right now, the game is not for you, okay? However, if you like open world PvP, if you like a few fun dungeons, if you like eventually being able to do some dailies in a world PvP zone that fosters a lot of uh, activity, uh, if you like a gear grind where you're doing dungeons and dailies trying to just make your character, if that's some of you out there like that, this has that. If you like some arenas and some um, big scale PvP like 100 v 100 uh, the battleground, or if you like the world bosses which is going to facilitate some big massive PvP, then maybe this game is for you. Um, and some of that stuff we haven't seen yet. So when someone asks, is this game for you? I would say it depends, yes or no. For me, I know I'm gonna keep playing it. I want to get to max level. I'm having some fun. And the most fun for me will be eventually when I get to do the world PVP and those massive battles, which the game is still gonna have some of that. But like I said, if you're worried about performance, if you want a fun leveling experience, if you are you know, expecting great questing, um, some of this stuff is definitely not going to work. And if you were leery about the developers, if you were leery about getting involved, I would say either definitely hold off or don't forget you can buy the game now for $30, play it on Steam for a little bit, and then return it if you don't like it. Now that the craziness of the launch has cooled down a little bit, it's a little bit better representation of being able to play the game. You may have seen Lazy Peon's video where he crashed, he said, every 30 minutes. That never happened to me. Um, but I can understand if that happened to you where you'd be super grumpy and upset about it. But the servers are better now than they were. So if you're on the fence still, maybe try it out for a couple hours and then you can return it. Otherwise, I'm still playing until something better comes along. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time.